We left off in the last video trying to solve for gamma. We set up this equation, and then we had the insight that, well, look, we could, particular, we could pick a particular event that is connected by light signal. And in that case, x would be equal to ct, but also x prime would be equal to ct prime. And if gamma is going to hold for any transformations between events, between x and x prime and t and t prime, it should definitely hold for this particular event. And so maybe we could use this to substitute back in and solve for gamma. So that's exactly what we're going to do right now. So for all the x's, I'm going to substitute it with the ct's. So I'm going to substitute it with the ct. So x, substitute ct, x. I'm going to substitute ct, x, substitute ct. And that's it. And then all the x primes, I'm going to substitute with a ct prime. With a ct prime. So x prime, ct prime. x prime, ct prime. And then I have an x prime here, so it's going to be ct prime. So let's simplify. And now I'm going to switch to a neutral color. So I'm going to now have, I'm now going to have c times c times t times t prime. So that's going to be c squared. Actually, let me just keep using the t, t primes. t, t primes. I'll, I'll still do a little bit of color coding. t prime is equal to gamma squared, gamma squared times, so it's going to be c squared. c times c is c. Let me do that in the yellow color. So c squared t times t prime. So t times t prime. And then we have plus c times v times t times t prime. Plus c times v, I'll just write it this way, c times t times v times t prime. And then we have minus, minus, let's see, we're going to have a c here. So minus c, minus c times t, t times v times t prime, times v times t prime. I wrote this v in blue just so it matches up with this, and we see something interesting is about to happen. And then finally, we have minus v squared, minus v squared times t times t prime, times t times t prime. It doesn't look that much simpler, but we're about to simplify it a good bit. And so we're going to get these two middle terms cancel out. So plus c t v t prime minus c t v t prime. So those are going to cancel out. And then every other term has a t t prime in it. So let's divide both sides of this equation by t t prime. And so we're going to get, if we divide the left-hand side by t t prime, we're just going to be left with c squared. And then we're just going to divide everything by t t prime. And there, our whole thing has simplified quite nicely. Our equation is now, I'll continue it over here. Our equation now is c squared is equal to gamma squared, is equal to gamma squared times c squared, times c squared minus v squared. Minus v squared. Minus v squared. And close the parentheses. And now we can divide both sides by c squared minus v squared, and we would get gamma squared. And I'm going to swap the sides too. So gamma squared is equal to c squared, c squared over c squared. I'll write it all in one color now. c squared minus v squared. Now if we like, we can divide the numerator and the denominator by c squared, in which case this will be equal to 1 over c squared divided by c squared is 1. And then v squared divided by c squared. And we are in the home stretch now. We can just take the square root of both sides. And we get, we deserve a little bit of a drum roll. Actually, let me continue it up here where I have some real estate. We get gamma is equal to the square root of this. Well, the square root of 1 is just 1 over the square root of the denominator. Square root of 1 minus 
v squared over c squared. So hopefully you found that as satisfying as I did. Because all we did, we just thought about, well, the symmetry, if x prime is going to be some scaling factor times the traditional Galilean transformation, and x is going to be some scaling factor times the traditional Galilean transformation from the prime coordinates, we use that. And it's important that we use one of the fundamental assumptions of special relativity that the speed of light is absolute in either frame of reference, that x divided by t is c, that x prime divided by t prime is going to be equal to c for some event that's associated with a, a light beam. We use that to substitute back in, and we were able to solve for a gamma. So this looks pretty neat. And so some of y'all might be saying, well, what about, what about our, we've, so we've been able to do the derivation for the x coordinates, but what about the, the Lorentz transformation for the t and t prime coordinates? And I'll let you think about how we do that. And I'll, I'll give you a clue. It's just going to be a little bit more algebra, and we're going to do that in the next video.